illegal immigrants, criminal illegal immigrants to get out of the country. They're not mm -hmm. for these sanctuary cities. And Greg Abbott, who is the governor of Texas, is jumping on board. And he tweeted this out over the weekend. He says, yes, I'm going to sign a law that bans sanctuary cities. Also, I've already issued an order cutting funding to sanctuary cities. It, Here's the tweet. It's we'll going to be fascinating because we're going to find out. Uh, we know Donald Trump, how he feels about it. We know he's been moved by the, the family members of those who have been lost to illegal aliens who have been here too long and Kate killed Steinle. too many. And, yeah, guy like Kate Steinle. But I'm just wondering when President-elect Trump does it, does he take on de Blasio and Rahm Emanuel and every city in San Francisco, uh, every city in California right away, mm -hmm. like the Gitmo, the, the, the Gitmo signing that Barack Obama famously had the first day? They say the funding's gone tomorrow if you don't declare sanctuary cities yesterday's news. Well, you know, it, it all started because somebody asked Greg Abbott down in Texas on Twitter. Uh, Austin just said that they're going to continue with sanctuary cities, and he responded, mm, I'm going to pass a law and uh, cut off their funding. Will Donald Trump do essentially the same thing? Stay tuned for that. Yeah, we'll find out if the president-elect will actually do that and when, in fact, he will do that, because that might be a standoff he wanted to avoid, or does he want to lay down the gauntlet does and say, I want to show you exactly what I'm going to do as president, everything that I said I did on the stone. Does he have the jurisdiction to do that, even sure. for states that, it's like Greg Abbott, money. Republican? Of course you're going to hear that from, from Texas, no, but, but what about California? But, but, but for example, uh, Ainsley, if there's federal money going to California, mm -hmm. he could just say, until you comply, you're not getting, you're not the, getting federal the federal money. money. Right. Make up for it somehow. All right. So anyway, stay, stay tuned for that. In the meantime, we've got some news with Heather right there. Yeah, certainly. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Hope you're off to a great Monday. Just moments ago, hundreds of passengers finally reached their destination after a long and horrifying night of travel. The engine on this plane catching fire mid-flight. Someone on board tweeted this video of the American Airlines jet as it finally landed in Albuquerque. Passengers relieved. And you can hear them clap right there. That plane had been flying from Dallas to Las Vegas when passengers heard a loud thud and then they saw flames. No word on the cause, but luckily no one was hurt. Well, new overnight, a potentially deadly terror attack foiled in the Philippines. Police detonating an IED just 60 feet away from the U.S. Embassy in Manila. Local officials believe an ISIS-linked group was behind that attempted attack. The bomb was discovered after someone saw a person riding in a taxi place something in a trash can. Police say it was the same type of explosive as the one that killed 15 people in a market in the Philippines earlier this year. And Fidel Castro's death is renewing calls to bring a cop killer back to the United States to face justice. Joanne Chesimard was convicted of murdering New Jersey State Trooper Warner Forrester during a traffic stop back in 1973. She escaped prison in 1979. She fled to Cuba and was given asylum there in 1984. Well, police leaders now urging the president-elect to, quote, reverse the shameful White House policy of friendship with a despotic government allowing convicted U.S. fugitives to be harbored, harbored and given safe haven. We'll be watching that one and see what Mr. Trump does. Well, do you remember this kid busted for breaking into and climbing into One World Trade Center while it was under construction? He was slapped with a misdemeanor, but apparently did not learn his lesson. That New Jersey teen is now taking his stunts to new heights, breaking into another building under construction, a high rise near New York Central Park. He recorded and posted the whole thing on social media. Yeah, it doesn't seem like a very good idea. And those are your headlines. Ooh. And the That's first responders are that. upset because if he gets into trouble, who are they going to call? They and they're going to put their lives in danger. Exactly. Crazy. I'll see you soon, guys. All, All right. right. Thanks, Heather. Meanwhile, remember when Hillary Clinton said this okay. to her supporters? Donald Trump is going to be our president. We owe him an open mind and the chance to lead. Well, apparently her supporters didn't all listen and are sending death threats to Michigan electors. One of those electors is going to join us live coming up next. Just one day after the election, Hillary Clinton had this message for her supporters. Donald Trump is going to be our president. We owe him an open mind and the chance to lead. Okay, but apparently many of her followers are still refusing to accept the results, even going so far as 
to sending death threats to members of the Electoral College, demanding that they switch their vote. Michael Benarian is one of those people. He is in the Electoral College. He's an official voter, and he joins us live today from Detroit. Good morning to you, Michael. Morning. Thanks for having me. So it started pretty much immediately after the election. What kind of messages were you getting? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, obviously you got the uh, uh, fellow Republicans and Trump supporters that gave me some well wishes. But unfortunately, right after that, I got inundated with Facebook messages, emails, tweets, uh, actually letters to my house. I'm getting like four or five every day and uh, a lot of hateful, angry messages, death threats, death wishes. So it's been quite the experience so far. You know, I wouldn't have the first idea where to start locating uh, members of the Electoral College. Did somebody mm -hmm. put your address and your numbers out there on the Internet or something? Yeah, so a lot of that information is public. And essentially what happened is some big groups came together. They collected all of our information, compiled a list and put it out on the Internet and encouraged people to contact us. So that's how they got that information. Okay, so folks uh, understand the kind of threats you're getting in addition to four or five a day, a number of death threats. We're going to show some of them. Uh, first one, Michael, I'm not going to argue with you, man. He's the president. Deal with it. Person, you support bigotry, hate, and racism. I hope you die. Michael, mm -hmm. wow, you're so ignorant. It's depressing. Thanks for wishing my death. And the person wrote back at you. You got a lot of these, didn't you? How did that person wind up with your, with your cell phone number? Well, so that was a Facebook message, and okay. you know, obviously our names are, are public, so they just punched it into Facebook, sent a message, and uh, that was kind of how it, how it happened. And I haven't gotten any text messages. I've gotten Facebook messages, uh, tweets, emails, and letters written to my, okay. ho my home address. Well, here's, a, here's another example of a threatening text. The person wrote, hey... I'll find you and put a bullet in your mouth. You and your Republican Party, you're a bandwagon member because last I checked, you was blank. And then, Michael, you wrote back, want me to send this threat to police? And then the person wrote, like I thought you blank. And then you wrote back, you're an awful person. There are a lot of awful people out there, aren't there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And a lot of them are coming out of the woodwork after this election. You know, what's curious is the tolerant left, as it turns out, is not so tolerant, are they? No. The hypocrisy is outstanding. I mean, I, I, I watched Hillary Clinton talk about how awful Republicans were and how awful Trump supporters were. Right. And now, not just myself, but electors across the country are being harassed by people that just can't accept sure. the election results. It's it's disappointing yeah no kidding so they, we've heard famously of some electors who said you know I'm gonna go rogue and I'm gonna vote for the other person you are obligated to vote for Donald Trump and you proudly will right yeah absolutely in fact in the state of Michigan as is in many other states we're not even allowed legally to change our votes in the state of Michigan if we try to change our vote mm -hmm. from how the popular vote voted in Michigan our votes will be voided and will just be replaced by another elector. So it's a pointless endeavor in Michigan and in a lot of other states. Well, hang in there, Michael. I know you're getting a lot of messages, but you're doing what you feel is the right thing, and we yeah. appreciate it. All right. Well, Michael thanks. Benarian joining us today from the city of Detroit. Thank you, sir. Yep. All right. It is 720 now here in New York City. He's known for training SEALs like Chris Kyle and Marcus Luttrell. Up next, hear from the congressman and former commander of the country's elite fighting squad. And his Make America Great Again hats have become a national phenomenon, but now President-elect Trump has a new hat with a new message. That's not it. We're going to show it to you coming up. We have got a Fox Business Alert for you on this Monday morning. After a record-breaking weekend for retailers online and brick-and-mortar stores, Cyber Monday is finally here. Give a cheer. Fox Business reporter Adam Shapiro is live in the middle of the chaos at Amazon's distribution center in Robbinsville, New Jersey. Adam, what is in store for all of us this year? Well, how about 629 items shipped per second? That was last year, and Amazon.com expects to break that number this year. Roughly $3.36 billion. That's almost $3.4 billion. That's how much all of us are going to spend on Cyber Monday 
just Cyber Monday. And that doesn't take into account the fact that, for instance, Amazon.com has 75,000 deals all week long. So 3.4 billion roughly. And then when you consider who's shopping, 49% of us, according to Adobe, 49% of us are going to do our online shopping at work. And 3% of that 49%, figure this out, that 3% are going to do their shopping during one-on-one -on -one in person meetings. How would you like that? You're talking to the boss and you're on the phone ordering stuff. And real quick, I just want to show you one of the hot items this year. This is uh, Love to Learn Elmo, usually 70 bucks. You can get it right now at Amazon.com, $32.99. Not to be confused with last year's hot item, Tickle Me Ainsley. But this one is one of the hot sellers they've got right yeah. now. It flew off the shelf. Right. Tickle me, eight little dog. Uh, yeah. At first, you don't were... even open up that can of worms, please. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, Adam, at the location you're at in New Jersey, do they ship to the whole country or just to the Northeast? So what Amazon.com has done is set up these fulfillment centers throughout the country. They're in different regions. This one opened in 2014. And so there are these fulfillment centers throughout the United States. But in some met metropolitan areas, you can order the stuff online and get it shipped to you yeah. within an hour. Right. For instance, this place can do that. One million square feet. We're talking 28 football fields. I'm a Browns fan, so I don't want to talk about football right, right now. Yeah, they lost again. Uh, but by the way, that's a lot of bubble wrap. Am I correct? <laughs> A lot. A lot. A lot of bubble wrap. I'm going to buy it right now for my little girl. Through. I don't want him to sell out, so thank right. you for that. Adam, thank you right, very raise much. Raise your hands. Let me see if y'all are ticklish. See you guys. What? <laughs> I, I am ticklish, but I don't really think that. That helps the show. <laughs> to find that with tickling. You're laughing at right. You're laughing like my dad used to do this to me, and we'd laugh because we knew he was about to tickle us, even before right. he touched us. Your dad, your dad went to choke you. <laughs> it's hysterical. All right, Brian, really Every family has on. new traditions. Hey, coming up straight ahead, back to business for the president-elect with another full day of high-level cabinet meetings as the Rust Belt recount gets underway with Hillary Clinton supporters. That's Tucker Carlson. Just did his hair. So does Mitt Romney, pictured right there, screen right, still have a chance? Tucker Carlson standing by in D.C. for a reaction in seconds. And it's the contest you're going to want to hear about this morning, how to win Super Bowl tickets for life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're welcome. Let me just remind you, morning's better with friends. Today's kind of a weird morning for me. Why? Why? It's the first day in five days that I haven't started the day with pumpkin pie. Really? Oh, I have pumpkin pie every morning. It's just not fair. Kellogg's How do you makes stay a pumpkin thin? pie cereal. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. <laughs> How do you stay thin and you eat pumpkin pie for breakfast? And it's about that, that much not fair. Cream. And hamburgers, right? Yeah, yeah, I did some believe You're eating like turkey bacon or turkey <laughs> burgers and Moderation. fruit and vegetables. I sit here for three hours. I don't do anything. I just chit chat and chew. <laughs> So we've got a busy show. Hey, You're officially uh, jealous. Stop it. Uh, Tucker's going to be with us in about a minute, eh, maybe two minutes. Actually, how long is the newscast, Heather? Uh, just about a couple minutes. Okay. And, and Steve, I have to confess, I had a piece of pumpkin pie for breakfast. It's the best. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Today? Yeah. No, not today. <laughs> the day after Thanksgiving. Yeah. It was delicious. It's great. All right. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, good morning to all of you. I've got a couple of headlines to bring you right now. Hundreds of passengers finally reaching their destination this morning after a long and horrifying night of travel. The engine on their original plane catching fire mid-flight. One passenger tweeting out this video of the American Airlines jet as it finally landed in Albuquerque, relieved. That plane was flying from Dallas to Las Vegas when passengers heard a loud thud and they saw flames. No word on the cause, and thankfully, no one was hurt. Well, new overnight, a potentially deadly terror attack foiled in the Philippines. Police detonated an IED just 60 feet away from the U.S. Embassy in Manila. Officials believe an ISIS-linked group was behind that attempted attack. The bomb was left inside a trash can by someone riding in a taxi early this morning. Police say it was the same type of explosive that killed 15 people in a market in the Philippines earlier this year. And a desperate search underway right now for the shooters who sent bullets flying on Bourbon Street, leaving one man dead and nine more injured. We will find them um, and we will go to the ends of the earth to make sure that we bring them to justice.
Congress and partiers in the area and running for their lives on New Orleans' busiest street early Sunday morning. Police now believe the shooting started as an argument between two people. All of the victims were innocent bystanders. And this is a terrific story. We love this one. Starting today, drink beer and win big. Bud Light randomly hiding some gold cans, you can see it right here, among their signature blue cans for a chance to secure Super Bowl tickets for life. 38,000 gold cans are now floating around in 18, 24, and 30 packs of 12-ounce Bud Light you know, the containers. So to win, you have to take a picture and post it on social media with the hashtag SBTix for life, Super Bowl tickets for life. A grand prize winner will be picked on January the 16th. And those are your headlines. How terrific is that? That's, that is that's awesome. Yes. That can in the picture looks a little green to me, so don't throw it away. If it's not a true, true gold, and it's a little bit of a lime green. Right. It'll still a taste winner. great. It'll right. taste great. <laughs> you talk, you. Hey, I wonder what Tucker, Tucker Carlson did over the Thanksgiving vacation. Well, uh, let's ask him. Tucker, what'd you do? I just drank Bud Light, waiting for that yeah. special gold. <laughs> 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 no, I drank Buckler. No, I went fishing in Florida, as always. Come oh, on. Fantastic. Buckler is a great non-alcoholic beer, yes, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's my favorite one. I totally one. agree. Take, Take that, O'Doul's. Okay, you right. know, they, they might be actually drinking over at uh, Trump headquarters because, uh, you know, Jill Stein has thrown an IED into the whole uh, party over there with this recount request. Do yes. you really think she thinks... The Russians rigged the election. Well, that's uh, thank you for saying that, because that's what it's really about. And most yeah. stories covering this don't mention that. The underlying impetus for this recount is the idea that the voting machines, the electronic voting machines, were somehow rigged or controlled by someone outside the government, most totally. likely the Russians. Yeah. There are, that's a pretty big allegation. Now, yeah. I don't dismiss anything. I don't, there's no evidence of that. But, I mean, I'm open-minded. I want to see the evidence. I, this recount doesn't bother me, actually. I don't think it's likely to change the outcome. And if there's a suggestion that that happened, let's find out. Trump, meanwhile, is also making, as you know, a suggestion that the election was rigged, saying that two to three million people voted illegally. That's also being dismissed as a crackpot theory, and maybe it is. There's no evidence for that either. But both of these together add up to something pretty significant, which is people don't believe in the veracity of the election results on either side, and mm -hmm. that is a massive problem. I really think there needs to be some kind of investigation into the results, not to overturn them, but to reassure the rest of us that right. you know, the system works. No, Tucker, there's no way this recount does nothing but put more doubt, more grist in the mill, more Yeah, you more may be right. It just does nothing but hurt the president-elect. And for Jill Stein to get traction when she didn't matter all for the last 18 months is unbelievable to me. I, I think the purpose of this, on, on the, from the perspective of Jill Stein, is not to make certain that the system is one of integrity. I absolutely agree with that. And the effect might be to delegitimize in the minds of some on the left Donald Trump, but he's already delegitimized in their view anyway. I just think we need to take three steps back and actually make certain that the average person believes in the sanctity of the system. And here's how you do that. By making sure that only people who are eligible to vote do so. Do you know how many states require, for example, proof of citizenship mm -hmm. before voting out of 50? Zero. Only one Kansas tried, and in September that requirement was overturned by federal right. judges. So look, there are over 10 million people here illegally. There's obviously a massive incentive on the part of the left for them to vote, why do we have a system yeah. where they can vote? You know, uh, we have got over 10 states issue driver's licenses to illegal aliens. Sure. Yeah, so, good like, question. there is the capacity for fraud. You know, uh, you know, Tucker, you brought something up, and it just reminded me. If they're, you know, let's say the Russians did hack into the Wisconsin voting machines, would you have the Wisconsin Secretary of State do it, or would you have the NSA do it? I mean, maybe they're calling the wrong people to look into well, that's, whether or not. That's exactly right. I mean, look... This is a major allegation that if foreign power somehow by remote controlled American voting machines. By the way, if there's any proof at all, any suggestion that that's actually true, that's a five alarm fire in the center of our democracy. Yeah. I mean, we really need to get on that. It's a pretty outrageous thing to say if you don't have proof to which allege or even imply, they which they absolutely proof. don't. But I mean, shouldn't somebody say, OK, let's take a sober look not necessarily recount the votes, but at the voting machines. Like, right. what are you saying? And press the people well, who are pushing this to be specific. Like, what exactly are you saying? Yeah, exactly. No one's doing that. There should be more proof. Let's talk about the transition team, because Kellyanne Conway was on the, on the and Gingrich on the Sunday shows talking about how <laughs> they're not for Mitt, uh, Mitt Romney. But if Trump chooses Mitt Romney, my thought was she's, she's risking a lot, because what if he chooses Mitt Romney? What does that right. mean for her? 
Well, she's obviously, and this is just my view, I think she's a very brave person to say that. She clearly yeah, means me it. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, and if this is the new era we're living in, now everyone in Washington is scoffing, how dare she speak out of turn and without permission? But my view is how refreshing it is to see someone say what she really thinks on television for once. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's making a real case, and it's two, it's two parts. The first is, if Mitt Romney was, you know, had a lot of support among Republican voters, he probably would have been the nominee. He doesn't, and therefore he wasn't. And so there are a lot of Trump voters who don't want to see this happen. Happen. And second, maybe more significantly, does Mitt Romney agree with Donald Trump's foreign policy positions? That's kind of a basic question. And I think right. the answer is probably no. It so for her to say this, I mean, I, I thought it was great. It's funny you say what, what the reaction is from folks in Washington, the establishment, because everywhere else, like in the South and in the flyover states, they're all applauding Kellyanne for saying that yeah. because they're mad at him for what he said and he didn't support Donald Trump over the last year. Should he apologize? But also, how, not, how nice is, oh, should Romney apologize? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. You'd, you'd have to think there would be some kind of, you know, reckoning or reconciliation between the two of them. If you say a guy is too immoral to be the president of the United States, and then you say, I'm going to serve in his cabinet. I mean, you know, there's got to be, be a transition from one to the other. Right. But I just think, you know, Kellyanne Fitzpatrick saying what she thinks. Right. I mean, in D.C., a scandal is, you know, is something that we didn't expect to happen, I guess. Right. But I hope we see more of this. And I hope I meet Kellyanne Fitzpatrick. Yeah, is that her maiden name? Conway. I feel so <laughs> bad. I'm name? so sorry. I'm so sorry. I've known her for so long. All the her name was Kellyanne Fitzpatrick. Same. Okay, please. Head of said that's she got her name. Yeah. 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 All right, so <laughs> you know before. I hey, beg your pardon. Right, so the other thing is, uh, the word is that uh, Donald Trump is not happy that Kellyanne Conway did this. So it's, uh, we're wondering if they're boxing him in and doing it. And personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with Mitt Romney. It's just that Mitt Romney came out and went against Donald Trump. So right. you have to think it's going to take a couple of years for him to convince people in a few interviews that he's not. And when there's a transition, maybe that'll be a good time for Romney if there's an opening that he likes to go forward. But just the last time we heard him talk, he was begging us not to vote for Donald Trump. Meanwhile, and, and again, on moral grounds, yeah. you know, he's like disgusting. You can't vote for him. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's talk, if we can, about sanctuary cities. Among the many things that, uh, that Donald Trump says he's going to do is he's going to stop it and deny federal funding for those cities that do it. Where right. is that in the things to do list if Tucker Carlson handed uh, Donald Trump a things to do list? Well, I mean, I think it's, it's maybe number one or two. I mean, what's so remarkable to me as someone who's you know, been paying attention for the last 20 years is for, for generations, liberals have said the states do not have a right to ignore federal law. That was the lesson of the civil rights era. That's why Orville Faubus was wrong and President Eisenhower was right. The state of Arkansas said, we're just not doing that. And the Fed said, no, you must because it's federal law. And liberals and, and me too have said, yes, that's exactly right. And now they're saying, you know what, if there's a federal law that we disagree with, we're just going to ignore it, and there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, right. the two cannot coexist. And so as a theoretical, as a matter of principle, I think it really matters, but also as a practical matter, you can't have cities where people who are totally you know, unknown, their origin <laughs> is unknown, are floating around and, and living. It's a threat to national security. And we know this from the 9-11 report. We know that I think it was six out of the 19 hijackers had violated immigration law. And one of the key recommendations of that report was you've got to kind of know who's living in your country or else sure. there are potentially really bad consequences. That's common <clears throat> sense. And so these mayors, for political reasons, are ignoring that. And I, and I think that cannot stand. Not just mayors, it's governors down in Texas. Uh, Greg Abbott right. was responding to a tweet. A guy said, hey, uh, the city of Austin just... Uh, reinforced that they will forever be a sanctuary city and then he came back and he said yes I'm going is there anything you can do to reverse it and the governor said yes I'm going to sign a law that bans sanctuary cities also I've already issued an order cutting funding to sanctuary cities that's really what Donald Trump can do as commander-in-chief uh, he can cut off the funding just like that well it's a little much to say to the federal government look we don't, we're not going to obey your laws. We, you know, we reject your laws, man, but we still want the subsidy. I mean, it's, you know what I mean? It's like a little like one of your teenage kids saying, I'm not going to obey anything you say, and up yours, I'm giving you the finger, but you still have to, you know, pay me, you know, 500 bucks a month and my tuition. I mean, like, you can't have both, sort of, right? All right. Tucker Carlson, it was a great, uh, great start to your show at 7 o'clock, and this week, somewhat controversial. You're going to do a best of Tucker Carlson, looking back at the week that was. It's early, all, yes. Uh, all week. <laughs> 
Uh, that's I'm also decision. doing an autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> Tucker, congratulations on the success. Thanks, guys. Everyone's it's great to see you. We're all happy And especially you. you, Ainsley. Thank you. <laughs> I love uh, you. His favorite. Thank you. His favorite. As usual. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Points right, right away. <laughs> all right, uh, straight ahead. Celebrations over the death of Cuban dictator Fidel Castro. But in Washington, new questions about what the president-elect will do now. There isn't going to be a one-way relationship from the United States to Cuba without some action from the Castro administration. Okay, we're live with the deal that could be in jeopardy coming up. And 1,000 veterans strong protesting after a college lowered the American flag to mourn Hillary's election loss. And now you're about to hear their message to America. Stands for all the veterans around the whole nation, everybody who fought for this flag. It's more than just a symbol. We are back with the Fox News Alert, a third straight night celebration in the city of Miami, following the death of former Cuban dictator Fidel Castro. But in Havana, a nine-day period of mourning is underway for the brutal ruler, and a memorial service is set to begin in less than an hour. Now, Rick is in Little Havana in Miami. Big difference. Many in Miami's community are calling yeah. for a change now that Fidel is dead, but Raul is still there. So what's going to change, Rick? Uh, good morning, Brian, Steve, and Ainsley. Uh, you know, Miami has a very large and influential Cuban exile community. Uh, they've certainly been celebrating the death of Fidel Castro, but they do believe that they say change should come in Cuba now that Fidel Castro has died. And they had a very emotional meeting yesterday at the Bay of Pig Museum, not far from here, to discuss plans for a big rally, a more serious rally later this week uh, that they say uh, should protest the lifting of sanctions by President Obama against Cuba because they say uh, nothing has been done to improve freedom or human rights on the island nation. So uh, these Cuban exiles say they will rally in support uh, of liberty and democracy in their homeland. A new country, a beautiful country mm -hmm. with free, free commerce mm -hmm. and liberty. Thanks God that everything is going to change now, I think. The darkness of Cuba is dead. Is dead. A chapter has been closed. The organizers are hoping that thousands of people will turn out for that rally on Wednesday afternoon. And during that time, guys, as you mentioned, it's also the nine days of mourning in Cuba as Fidel's ashes make their way across the country. Right, but it's not mourning there in Little Havana. Do we expect another day on this Monday no. of celebrating? Cowbell? Well, we know, we know people will be here because of the amazing uh, Cafe Cubano and the empanadas here, which I can tell <laughs> you were on point this morning, as they always are. But, you know, we, we have seen large crowds here. We expect more crowds again today uh, because the Cuban people here in Miami want Cuba to know how they feel about the death of Fidel Castro. We have seen them banging on pots and pans, waving the red, white, and blue flags of both Cuba and the United States, celebrating honking horns and, and breaching liberty. Uh, saying that, you know, the death of Fidel is a good thing uh, and that what needs to happen now is change, guys. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. Hopefully for the Cuban people it does. Let's see if anything changes about our policies towards Cuba. Yeah, All exactly. Right. Rick, thank you so much. Meanwhile, coming up on this Monday, Democrats tried to bait millennials with promises like this. Tuition free. Tuition free. Tuition free. 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 We love free, but we just learned you might not need that free tuition after all. And a contender for the DNC chief spot once wanted to make a separate country for black people. Our next guest explains why. We have some quick headlines for you. In his final weeks in office, President Obama pushing for a flurry of executive actions. The White House now reviewing nearly 100 so-called midnight regulations. But Mr. Trump has pledged to repeal every single executive order. And it's the campaign promise that made Bernie Sanders so popular. Make public colleges and universities tuition free. Tuition free. Tuition free. 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 Free? Free. But maybe we don't need free college after all. In the last few years, at least 50 public colleges and universities across our country have lowered tuition for out-of-state students by more than 10%. That's great news. All right, Steve, over to you. Step in the right direction. Aisley, thank you. The left is looking for a new DNC chair, but are they looking too far to the left? Apparently their top choice is that man right there, Minnesota Congressman Keith Ellison. He's taking heat for extreme comments from his past, including once upon a time calling for a separate country. 
here in the United States for African Americans. Is this what the party leadership has in mind? Joining us right now for his reaction is Kevin Jackson, Fox News contributor and executive director of the Black Sphere, joins us today from St. Louis. Kevin, good morning to you. Good to talk to you, Steve. So I I explain to us, if you will, because I'm sure you did a little of the research, how Keith Ellison suggested a black state. Well, it's not so much that he suggested that you guys have already pretty much teased that that is what he said. I think the bigger implication is the idea that people call Donald Trump racist when this is the person that the Democrats want to lead their party, a person who says black people should have a separate state. And he's endorsed by Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. He's supported by Chuck Schumer. Many of party leadership of the Democrats support a person who wants to essentially peel black people out of a country that we are a very good, a, a, an integral part of and make a separate state. I would ask Keith Ellison what he thinks Africans coming from Africa are, why they come to the United States. They don't come to the United States to be black. Africans come to the United States to become Americans, mm -hmm. not to become blacks. Sure. And, and so this idea that, that the Democrats condone these types of racist policies, quite frankly, I'm happy to see Keith Ellison. I'd love to see him become the, the new Democrat a leader because he certainly represents them very well. So you feel that if he were to uh, become the leader of the DNC, he would pull the DNC so far to the left, it would be better for people in the middle and to the right? Certainly. Keith Ellison is what I call an ethnocentric racist. And everything about him has nothing to do with making America better, making the Democrat Party better. It has to do with essentially catering to blacks. And, 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 and look, the policies that, that Donald Trump and many, uh, many on the right are trying to implement will raise the ocean, is, it, it will raise all the boats in the ocean. Mm -hmm. What Keith Ellison wants to do is pretend that blacks have some unique problems in America, which we don't. The problems that blacks face in America are problems caused by liberals, problems caused by Democrats, and Keith Ellison wants to pretend that it's something different. It's not. It's, it's that. And if all we need to do is get sanity back into politics, and a perfect example, Steve, is if you were to reverse this, if Donald Trump or any other Republican had said what Keith Ellison said, do you believe that we could be touting this person as a leader within the Republican Party or a leader in the conservative movement? Sure. The answer is no. He'd be considered blatantly racist. Yeah, that is such a good point. I, I wonder, you know, and I don't know that anybody has queried him if he were to lead the DNC, if they would be behind this recall election, that the, uh, the recall, uh, recall, the recount, that is to say, in Wisconsin, that is being waged by the Green Party right now, which, you know, Jill Stein came in fourth. The Democrat came in second, <laughs> and yet she's the one who's asking uh, for all the votes to be recounted. Seems a little odd. Well, what... All these things, Steve, point to the desperation of the Democrats. We're talking about a group of people who have lost an election fair and square. They believed in their heart of hearts that they were going to win because that, that's the fallacy of, of, their, of, their, of their belief system is that they think that they're on the right track. Many of America were talking about this for years, and, 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 or, and certainly over the last year. What's interesting about this is, yet again, the Democrats have been talking about we ignored flyover country. We ignored yeah. the, the, uh, the, the blue-collar white vote. And then what do they do? They want to put an ethnocentric black racist in charge of the party because that's going to bring back the, the blue-collar white vote. That just shows you the level of idiocy yeah. that exists in that party. Well, let's see what they wind up doing. Uh, Kevin Jackson, we thank you very much for joining us today from St. Louis. Thank you, sir. My pleasure, Steve. All right. What do you think about that? Email us, friends at foxnews.com. Meanwhile, the president-elect and his possible pick for secretary of state, Mitt Romney, once enemies, now seem to be friends. But remember this. Donald Trump is a phony, a fraud. Ouch. Can those two really let bygones be bygones, or will Romney have to apologize? And what would that be like? Ed Henry, who had this story over the weekend, is here next with an update. And this was not supposed to happen. Pop singer Ed Sheeran, Sheeran, that is to say, attending a knighting ceremony when things went terribly wrong. Now it's time for your shot of the morning. Rudolph's apparently got a new gig. Domino's Pizza in Japan is taking a page out of Santa's playbook and training reindeer 
to deliver pizzas in snowstorms. <laughs> but animal lovers don't worry because Domino's is working with experts to ensure the welfare of the reindeer, including pinpointing the maximum weight that they can hold comfortably and just how far they can actually carry it in the snow. Right. I don't know if I want that pizza that just fell off the sled. Uh, customers can even track their orders. Uh, each reindeer will be fitted with a GPS device. That's great. And plus, reindeer like to work. I mean, they well, want sure. stuff to do. They have nothing to do. Yeah, but aren't they supposed to be flying through the air? Yeah, isn't, isn't that, Santa supposed to be on that sleigh? Well, yeah. that's that's a whole. That's so much money. It wouldn't make it. We wouldn't make it uh, He just work, He works in a couple of weeks. Uh, Ed Henry was working over the weekend. He joins us live right now. You know, they put a GPS chip in my, in uh, one of my ears, and they just kept pulling me back into the studio. And they did. They actually yeah. it was They're a like, bit of an attraction. Uh, we, well, it's bottom of the barrel. Well, you know, the thing is, Ed. <laughs> the thing is, people want you to work because the most exciting story right now in the transition yeah. is the most important position, arguably, and that's Secretary of State. Yeah. This thing is being played out in public. The latest report is Kellyanne Conway is doing this in defiance of what Donald Trump Which is wants. really remarkable. I mean, look, this all started really on this show on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. You guys had Mike Huckabee on, okay. and he said, you know, it'd be ridiculous if Mitt Romney got this. Because I think folks like Huckabee, Giuliani, Gingrich are all looking at this saying, we were really loyal to Donald Trump, and we're, you know, not getting the key jobs in this administration. Why is this guy, who called him a phony and a fraud, uh, getting maybe the biggest job in the cabinet. And then I heard on Thursday from someone very senior in the transition, and we reported it over the weekend, that um, there's a discussion going on between President-elect Trump and others uh, about whether Mitt Romney should have to apologize in some public way, a letter, a statement, or something, to try to clear the air after all of that and try to bring uh, the party together. What I find interesting is that over the weekend I also heard that Mike Pence was involved in this, that the vice president-elect was on the phone yeah. with Mitt Romney. It also tells me that, that it's not over, despite the criticism from Newt Gingrich on this show yesterday, uh, Kellyanne Conway on multiple shows. Uh, but look, at the end of the day, uh, Romney is, is still uh, viable here sure. because one man is deciding this. It, it's, it's actually President-elect Trump. And Steve and I were talking in the hallway a few minutes ago, and I was thinking back to I asked George W. Bush a question as president in 2006 in the Rose Garden about all these critics of Donald Rumsfeld, mm -hmm. and they wanted him fired over the Iraq War. And if you remember, George W. Bush's answer was, I hear the critics, but I'm the decider. Right. And his critics were all mad at, oh, George W. Bush won't listen to anybody. But you know what? He stuck with his people. He was loyal. Sure. And at the end of the day, if Donald Trump wants Mitt Romney as Secretary of State, it's going to happen. And what if, he does, what, the what if he does choose him? Then what does Mitt Romney need to say to the Donald Trump voters who are upset with him? Well, I think, look, what Mike Huckabee said on this program almost a week ago was prescient. He was saying there's got to be some sort of public acknowledgement that he didn't just say, I'm not voting for Donald Trump. He didn't just say, I disagree with him on foreign policy. He said he's a bad guy. His right. character's wrong. He he's a way. fraud. He went out of his you way. You have to do something in the estimation, not of me, I'm just reporting sure. what people around Donald Trump are saying. They believe uh, that there has to be some public uh, mea culpa. This, this is what I heard constantly among other Republicans, including lawmakers, was, I don't understand where this is coming from. I tried to call him and talk him out of doing this. We don't understand where this is coming from. And these are some of these people, two of the people that said it to me were never Trumpers. Sure. So I just think he doesn't need to apologize. I just think he needs to explain himself. Yeah, I think there's a couple things that work. One is, you know, these, some of these same critics who were saying uh, back in the campaign and then during the beginning of the transition, Donald Trump won't listen to anyone. He doesn't want to hear other voices. He only wants, you know, a small kitchen cabinet and around him. He's the decider. He's remember. the decider. And now he's reaching out. And maybe he just thinks, you know what, I want to bring in someone who's been a critic sure. and sort of unify the party, maybe unify the country, maybe not, but, but that could be one well, thing he's here. he's measured, he's smart, he's... Sure. He looks the part, acts the part. Mitt Romney? Yeah. He's well, and people inside the transition also tell me there's something else going on here, which is about Rudy Giuliani, which, yes, he's been very loyal to Donald Trump, but they're concerned inside the transition about his international business dealings. It doesn't mean he's disqualified. Yeah. It doesn't mean that he might not get some other important job. By the way, Rudy Giuliani doesn't need a cabinet post to be important. Yeah. He doesn't need a cabinet post to have the president's ear. He's going to have it whether sure. you put a title on, on, on his business card or not. We you know, I, I just think if, if Mitt Romney has a public statement or writes a, a note, a <laughs> forgive me note, I just don't think people are going to buy it because they're going to they go, might not. you know what? He's just saying that to get the job. Right, and then if you get the job after being sort of on bended knee there, yeah. apologizing, how do you go around the world representing the president of the United States? Wait, I so, thought you said that guy, your boss was a you fraud. You said he was a fraud. He was 
a phone. That's why I just explained it out. I think it's interesting, too, because uh, Kellyanne Conway has said in the past to New Yorker magazine, uh, if I want to reach Donald Trump, oftentimes we do it through television <laughs> because that's we know he watches. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting as well because how is it that Kellyanne Conway, who was the campaign manager, clearly had the confidence of the mm -hmm. then nominee, Donald Trump, now has the confidence of the president-elect, we believe, because she says that right after the election victory, he offered her an important job that yep. it looks like she's going to take. We don't know if senior advisor or something inside the White House. So why can't she just pick up the phone? You know, it, why is she doing it on TV? You know what? It could be part of the strategy. It could be a good cop, bad cop thing, because this way they're able to get both messages out from each of them. And Who's sooner or later, the decider has to step in and say, here's yeah. the decision, right? Yeah. All right. Good to see you guys. Ed, thank you very thank much. You. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank All right. Merry Christmas is what you've got to yeah, start we got to move now. on. Happy now, right? Cyber Monday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cyber Monday is setting up over the You corner. know, Cyber Monday started last Monday. I started getting emails, you know, from the NBA store where I buy my son gifts all the time. Cyber right. Monday, it's, it's now a week. It's two weeks long. Yeah. Right. And by the way, so that's not a great place to fight, shop for your wife, but it's great to shop for, for your, your son. son. He loves the NBA. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, Heather, now it's here. Good morning. I was just shopping online over there on the corner. Uh, What'd you get? get? Uh, uh, a bag. For yourself? Wait, are you shopping <laughs> for, for other people? <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, good morning. I've got a couple of headlines to bring in a serious story to start out with right now. We are getting brand new chilling details about the California mom who disappeared for three weeks after she went on a run. Sherry Papini's captors let her go on an interstate 150 miles away from home on Thanksgiving morning. The chilling audio from the moment police found her now released. Listen. The surprising lady is uh, heavily battered and it is confirmed yet that CHP is on scene and advised that she is changed to something. Well, police are now hunting for two women. They describe them as Hispanic. They believe that they're involved in the kidnapping, also believed to be armed and dangerous. 1,000 veterans protesting a college decision to remove the American flag from its campus. Hampshire College in Massachusetts lowering their flag to half staff after President-elect Donald Trump won the election, and that sparked a whole lot of controversy. That flag was then found burned on Veterans Day, and that prompted officials to remove it indefinitely and that has outraged vets. Raise your flags everybody! Raise them high in that air! This stands for all the veterans around the whole nation. Everybody who fought for this flag. It's more than just a symbol. I would die for this flag. I fought for this flag. I live for it. Well, veterans at the rally say the school's decision disrespects former and current members of our military. And the singer Ed Sheeran may have the greatest party party Sheeran, pardon me, greatest party story of all time. See that cut on his cheek? He was reportedly slashed by British Princess Beatrice.